Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can the tell my kick setting. Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's God. it's bringing the decibels. Down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. We're gonna talk about Mario and world domination mm -hmm. and uh, you know, might be Jurassic World domination. The Super Mario Brothers movie is the third highest box office take for any Universal movie domestic. Mm -hmm. that, that's insane. The only two movies that have done better for Universal in the American box office. It's Jurassic World and E.T., which was a massive, massive hit back Well, in it's going to beat E.T. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who wants to beat E.T.? Now, if you look at if you look at International, I'm going to pull the numbers well, up. Well, he does look like a penis. He, he does. Or balls. You know, so. He does. He looks I mean, like you ask the question. Go ahead. Anyway. Anyway, Mario is probably going to stomp that wrinkly little bastard here pretty mm -hmm. soon. And, um, you know, again, over... Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> Overseas, uh, the Fast and Furious movies did really well. Now uh -huh. they're they're huge for Universal. But I mean, this is this is crazy. We knew Mario was going to be big. Um, we knew it was going to be big for an animated movie. We didn't realize how big it was going to be just in general. And this movie is just destroying everything in its path, like Dungeons and Dragons, like so many other movies that tried. Like, why the hell you would release your movie less than a week before this one? It's beyond me. But this is also indicative of a huge seismic shift in the entertainment landscape because it's not just about the Mario movie. Uh, Universal in general between, you know, animation, their animation department destroying Disney and the box office. I mean, Strange World's losing money, Lightyear's losing money. I think the other movie they have coming out this year might not do so hot. Um, and them eating Disney's lunch in the theme parks. You know, it's 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 definitely there's going to be a shift. And if, if they are forced to buy the rest of Hulu too. They're definitely gonna put Disney in the hole. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this stuff uh, here on Clownfish TV. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. So if you do, you get a woohoo. Woohoo! And uh, also check out this campaign. We're giving you a webcomic on paper. Yeah, we kind of like put it up late last night and didn't even promote it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, we're like, no. yo, do it tomorrow. We did, we did this with our other campaigns too. We don't like a lot of people, they do like a big live stream rollout and whatever. And we're just kind of like, oh yeah, we got this out there. And then we it have takes to do a live stream. We owe people a live stream. We do. Uh, I think we're safely over 300,000. So maybe we'll try to shoot for some time next week. We'll see. We'll see what the schedule's like. We've been very, very busy lately. I don't think people realize uh, we do have other businesses we're trying to get going and uh, other businesses we have to take care of. And our schedules are all over the place, which is why we don't do a lot of live streams because we never know where we're going to be on any given day mm -hmm. to be able to actually pin ourselves down to be right. like, okay, we got like two hours we can do this. Right. But anyway, back to this. Back so to apparently this. this is a comic that was put together that was a collection of comics based on things that we said. Yes. At the halftime, I don't remember like a lot of the stuff. I'm like, oh, did I say that? I don't remember. <laughs> uh, I do vaguely remember this. This is when I, I... Oh, I remember this. Yeah, I lost my shit about the D&D uh, &D coffee shop adventures. But, yeah, that was so dumb. But uh, no, the, the story behind this was uh, Jim Wong, who's been watching us for years, did s some fan comics of us on Twitter. And I approached him uh, about two years ago. And I said, hey, you want to do like an official Clownfish TV webcomic? And then yada, yada, yada. The pandemic happened. Lots of other stuff happened. And it was like, OK, instead of doing it as a webcomic, we'll bundle everything up and do it as a book. We'll do it as a book instead. And uh, now we're offering it as a book instead. So it's a webcomic on paper, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. So there we go. We're doing it backwards. Yes. So that's about us. You can check it out on Indiegogo. I will put a link in the description. We're going to talk about Mario. Uh, this is coming from comicbook.com. After its first two record-breaking weekends, Super Mario Brothers will cross 400 million domestic on the way to winning its third straight weekend. 
The Super Mario Brothers movie will earn an estimated 58 million in its third weekend. And that'd go up. They keep estimating early on in a weekend, and by Sunday night, Monday morning, they found out it was way more than what they thought. Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. Including 14 million on Friday. The box office total will climb to 434 million by Sunday, making it Universal Pictures' third highest grossing movie of all time, behind only Jurassic World and E.T. And it almost has E.T. beat. Yeah, so now this is uh, domestic, and this is uh, last week before they updated. Mario is number five, but it's going to overtake Jurassic Park and uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which sucked. I didn't like that one very much. I didn't um, watch it. So, I mean, is it possible that this could actually dethrone Jurassic World? I don't I know. I mean, it has a ways to go. I don't know if it will domestically, but AT for sure it's going to. Yeah, I mean, look, a lot of their movies do very, very well. Despicable Me 2, Minions, um, you know. And are these adjusted for inflation? I don't think they're adjusted for inflation, are they? Because E.T. Know. was massive. I don't think people, like, E.T. was like the avatar of its But back then, too, you have to remember, too, there wasn't as many movies. And so when they have movies in the theater, they'd sit in the theater for months. Oh, yeah. Like, they would be there, like, it's not like now. It would be, you got maybe a couple new releases a year, and they'd sit there for, like, Five months. I know, you know. I know. Home Alone. Home Alone was in the a theater year. for like a year. I remember. Et. I think it was like a year. And then they did a. I remember they did a re-release in like nineteen. I want to say like eighty-five or eighty-six. Because I remember seeing. I was little then, but I remember seeing a poster for Et again. I'm like, oh my god, is it still in the theater? Like, what's up with that? And we went to go see Black Cauldron, I think, instead, and they were playing Et again. But. Uh, I mean, E.T. was huge. So, I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, this is, I mean, look, it's Mario. Mario's better known than Mickey Mouse. We still haven't had it released in Japan. No, and, I and forgot about South that. Korea. Yeah. You know, oh it hasn't even been released there. But domestically, we're talking, we're looking at domestic numbers, not, not global. So. They talk about the other movies that are out. Nobody cares about those. Evil Dead Rise. And remember Dungeons and Dragons? That mm -hmm. came out a couple of weeks ago. Nobody really cares about that. But what's really, um, Really interesting about this is that uh, it, it is definitely cementing Universal as being the place for animation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only Disney movie that's opened better than Mario currently, I think, was The Incredibles. I want to say The Incredibles was a bigger opening. But the Incredibles was. The Incredibles 2. Incredibles 2. Okay. They, they got to it fast. They got to the same amount of money faster. But that's going to have been waiting for years and years for Incredibles 2. Yeah. And it was okay. It was basically just the gender swapped version of the original movie it was all right we got to see it when it still had the seizure effects too yeah you oh know? did we yeah i remember we covered it but i don't remember opening if we weekend yeah because they, they toned down the strobe light effects oh yeah because um, we got it on dvd or blu-ray or whatever and we're like yeah it doesn't seem like it's as flashy as it was in the theater they had warnings on it too they did have tr yeah we're like what's up with this the warnings uh but anyway yeah it's i mean look this is just a seismic shift as Disney is laying people off, as Disney is freaking out, trying to cut back on expenses. You know, Universal has been ramping up its theme park presence. They've been ramping up animation. And those are the two things that Disney was known for. And the thing is that Universal is owned by Comcast, which owns the Internet, basically, or a big chunk of it in cable. So they're not as dependent on you know, macroeconomic circumstances or pandemics or whatever, you know, tanking their business. It's like they don't have to worry about it as much because people are still going to pay their internet bill, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm really amused by this comment on here. They're talking about... It's not always it's not always easy, but fans of theme parks try their best to expect the unexpected. After all, themed entertainment projects, especially those orchestrated by Disney Universal, tend to evolve in secret. <laughs> it's funny. As the last year alone has showed, you never know when Disney will quietly launch a meet and greet. Yes, because a lot of their new things that they've been doing is, oh my gosh, exciting new news. We're going to have an Encanto meet and greet. Mm -hmm. It's all meet and greets. I'm sorry. And they're talking about or, or, or a new theme park land. No rumor blog is even rumored. And they're talking about Disney with their possible maybe, you know, Blue Sky what's behind thunder mountain and yeah. it's like but this is all disney disney talks out their ass they have to have barely anything new yeah it's also that they've been working on what their new exciting thrills they've been announcing has been meet and greets and and you know and then rumors have been piling up about this you know stuff that they might add to magic kingdom meanwhile universal is just announcing it and doing it the thing about it is is universal does they don't just talk and it's actually shocking how quickly they can put things together. Like they're building Epic Universe, which is a massive theme park. And they, if the pandemic didn't happen, it'd be open already. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. they, 
they are able to put things together very quickly. They're like, hey, we're doing a, a Jurassic World coaster. Cool. When's that going to open? Like five years? Uh, no, like next summer. Yeah. It's got, you know, and, and it's so quick how they can turn things around compared to Disney. It's like, yeah, we've been kind of milking this Tron coaster for you know, oh six God. or seven it's, years it's now. It's been ridiculous. You know, yeah. eventually, eventually we'll open Guardians of the Galaxy, which they finally did. Eventually we'll fill in that giant hole in Epcot with something. Well, Universal is coming for Disney, too, because they're doing that family. That's what this is about. That family yeah. skilled theme park in Frisco, Texas. That's based on. Like, you know, they're minions and things like that. Things that, that for kids. And the Halloween Horror Nights. And they haven't forgotten the middle class either. They, then in Vegas, they're they're doing something with Halloween Horror Nights. Yep. Um, Year round. And, you know, they're, they're building parks all over the world. And meanwhile, Disney is like scrambling to hold on to what it has. And I think basically at the end of the day, you know, Disney didn't think they had to innovate anymore. And right. a lot of the people behind both the animation and the theme park side of things are former Disney employees that they cut loose. Islands of Adventure was actually what was going to be uh, Beastly Kingdom and Animal mm-hmm. Kingdom, and they they cut those guys loose. Right. If you go into Animal Kingdom, you see like the 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 one like dragon head mm-hmm. on the on the entryway. That was supposed to be a whole other section that they just didn't even do. Disney turned down Harry Potter. They turned it down. Well, no, they tried to get it, but then they They wanted to make it their way, yeah. Yeah, they wanted, and she said no, so they turned it down, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, look, they've made a lot of missteps over the years, but I think it's all coming to a head. And the fact that they are getting trounced in the two things they are known the most for, animation and theme parks. And that's that's not good. So, at that point, what is Disney? I'm you sorry. Know, what are they? I'm looking at this picture, and there's more parking than there is park. <laughs> that's, that's usually how it is. Though. I mean, you look at any theme park on the on the map, and it's. But if it's you like, have that many cars with that many people in the cars, they're not going to fit in the park. I'm just pointing that out because you have a every car holds ants? like you're bringing parents and their kids because it's for kids. Yeah, most people bring kids, so you're gonna have at least two people per car, at least most likely more, most likely three or plus. And and those and they have all this parking for all of this little. There are gonna be more people than what can fit in that park. I'm just I'm just pointing out the obvious. Go ahead. Anyway, anyway, you want to send them all to the hotels with the gift shops, you know, push them that way. Um, no, I just think it's it's kind of brilliant to to see happen. And and look, I, I've actually been really impressed with what Universal has been doing the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, Can't wait to see uh, Nintendo. Yeah, and Nintendo's going to be awesome. I want to see Super Nintendo World. We can't get out to California anytime soon, so. No, but um, the fact that they're building these these smaller parks all over the place, too, is mm-hmm. not a good sign. Disney talked about it before. They had, like, Disney's America, and they had, you know, they were going to do one in the Midwest, and they were going to, and they never really got off the ground. Instead, they're like, let's build a bunch of parks in, like, you know, China, because, you know, Bob Iger. You know, I think what they were doing there was like when you one I do agree with you it was to try to to stop the the co- the copyright infringement on their yeah, merchandise because yeah. just recently they arrested some I guess a internet star over there that was trying to sell knockoff Disney plush and mm-hmm. stuff so that, that it worked but I think a lot of it too was well they're willing to pay for R and D and yeah. if they pay for R and D we could just be like why well, have one and we can have two and then just bring it over here and then we don't have to pay for it Tron coaster. Case in point, because Shanghai is not owned fully by by mm-hmm. Disney, um, but yeah, they they did the R and D, they did the Tron coaster over there, which I thought was weird because Tron Legacy was a flop, and they're like, yeah, now's a good time to do a Tron ride, uh, like five years after Tron. Hey, original out. Tron's still awesome. I know it's dated, but I always will love it. I didn't yeah. like. I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't like Legacy. Yeah, it well, wasn't my thing. I was like, there's no fucking Tron in Tron Legacy, and I don't like that. The cartoon show was good. Tron was in that. Well, the Tron was in that. He was in that. that that's yeah. different. He was in it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to wrap this one up, though, guys. I think this is going to be very interesting to, to, to watch. Uh, I mean, this is just unreal to, to see how quickly things have changed. And again, you know, Minions killed it last year while Disney was dumping their stuff on the Disney Plus and striking out the box office. Uh, Universal's just eating their lunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, completely. But so. it's going to go past ET. Um, oh, yeah. And, it, and we, like, this estimate, it can go lower. It most likely will go higher because every time they estimate it, they keep raising it throughout the weekend. Yeah. So um, it's really close. It's only like $3 million off from beating ET. And then it's just heading for Jurassic World. This is domestic, though, of course. Yeah. All right. Wrap it up. Yep. All right. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.